Absolutely, Francis. And uh, the uh, ANC president uh, previously saying that if that particular issue is not dealt with uh, uh, precisely, uh, then basically the country itself would not be able to move forward. The, pre the ANC president there saying corruption must be dealt with, law enforcement must act, employees of the state should not uh, conduct a business or with the government. Of course, we've seen over the past uh, couple of days quite a number of uh, uh, high-profile arrests uh, that have been made relating to uh, uh, alleged fraud and corruption. Uh, let's bring in uh, SABC political uh, reporter Samkele Maseko now, who joins me on the line. Sam, a very good evening uh, to you. So no surprise that the ANC president uh, putting quite a lot of emphasis on the issue of corruption. Yes, indeed. Uh, the ANC president has been very consistent when it comes to the issues of corruption and uh, the governing party fighting uh, this particular issue head on and not being scared that it involves high profile uh, politicians uh, and leaders of the governing party. You saw in the past weeks, uh, former mayors, former MECs in the Free State Province were arrested. In particular, the ousted mayor of Mangawunk is behind bars and uh, is out on bail currently on issues of the asbestos contract while she was still the MEC in that province. We've got business people like Edwin Sodi, a known socialite and a known uh, business uh, person associated to the governing party behind bars. We've seen the number of arrests on individuals linked to Busasa, in particular Vincent Smith, uh, the former chairperson of uh, the Correctional Services Portfolio Committee in Parliament. And we've also got the likes of Zandi Lekumet uh, linked to the waste uh, contract in Durban, in the Etegwini municipality behind bars. But more importantly here, Criselda, mm -hmm. is that uh, it basically looks like the ANC in this uh, ANC Lohutla focused largely on the economic aspect of the economic recovery of the country, on the various macroeconomic policies that need to be followed in order to implement uh, the economic recovery of the country so that uh, there could be job creation. For instance, you go to the infrastructure built projects that they are uh, largely embarking on, which relates to the construction sector and also relates uh, to energy security in the country, knowing that uh, ESCOM is uh, dismally failing in its mandate uh, to provide the country with energy. Mm. And I mean, how important then, I think, is it from a party perspective for it to be seen to be dealing with corruption on its own fronts? Because you have the ANC president, who also happens to be the president of the country, while those two hats are not worn at the same time, in particular with this particular uh, address that he's, he's, he's giving today. Um, how important is it for the party itself to be seen to be dealing with corruption on its own fronts? It's very important for the African National Congress not only to be seen, Criselda, to be dealing with corruption. Uh, for instance, you look at the various views that are coming from South Africans in saying that uh, it's one and good to arrest people, but the proof is in the pudding mm. that you need to have people with uh, successful convictions on them from the criminal justice system in the country and by the courts that you do not need only the hawks uh, running around the country with the uh, golf sevens and arresting people, but for the NPA only to let the system down and failing to have their ducks in a row and successfully prosecute people, successfully investigate these particular matters in order to prosecute these individuals that have had their hands in the cookie jar, those who have had uh, uh, who've been paid for uh, short workmanship, those who have been uh, paid for work that has not been done, particularly when it comes to the asbestos contract in the Free State Province. But also what is far more important is that South Africans are not looking for lip service. South Africans are looking for issues that are their bread and butter issues, issues of uh, what will they go to bed, have, uh, would they have eaten, issues of employment, issues of proper shelter over their heads. Lip service of politicians no longer generates that particular atmosphere of South Africans listening to these particular political talking heads. But it's rather in what the president said at the end. Implementation, implementation, implementation. But through that implementation, you need to monitor, detect and eradicate issues of corruption in order for the country to recover economically. Because if you've got the rampant corruption, that affects the economic growth of the country. It affects uh, job creation, which essentially is the backdrop of the economic recovery of the country. And especially when it comes to the SME sector of uh, small to micro uh, to medium enterprises that are essentially where uh, employment of the country comes from. Mm. Uh, some of the things that the ANC president had touched on are relatively uh, not new, Samkele, but I guess uh, implementing these uh, and, and, uh, and finding a way, not just giving lip service to uh, you know, issues of turning around uh, the economy, but to actually have it be seen that it will actually be implemented and that there will be some kind of turnaround. Chriselda, if you look at the president's speech, he speaks about an eight-point plan of recovery. He highlights the issues of infrastructure, energy security, and emphasis on the tourism sector in the country. 
in order to be able to create jobs. Now the issue is having the minister of the ministers of the economic cluster coming on board, Chris Alder, and implementing this eight-point plan that has seemingly been adopted by the governing party and also tracking this particular implementation because it starts off with the first step, which is essentially uh, surviving the country of this COVID-19 pandemic, saving lives, and then moving on to the economic aspect from point two right up until point eight. And it also speaks about a contentious issue of late of the employment within the public service. You remember mm -hmm. the Minister of Public Administration, Senzum Tuna, has been embarking on an issue of uh, getting some elderly uh, citizens within South Africa who are currently in the employ of governments to take early retirement. You've also had the likes of the Minister of Finance, Tito Mboini, saying the current uh, public wage bill is bloated and it needs uh, essentially to be trimmed down in order for the country to survive economically. It's rather interesting that the President raises this issue of the employment within the public sector now, especially especially since uh, you've got issues uh, ongoing with Nahau and with the uh, labor federations and unions in the country when it comes to the implementation of the public sector wage bill that was negotiated three years ago and its final implementation in the third year has been stalled by government and you've got the unions uh, and federations such as Kosatu and Nahau, Fedusa threatening to go to the streets. You've also got the new labor federation, the new kid in the block, SAFTU, which is also saying that no economic recovery plan of the country can be implemented if they are not consulted. So the president in this eight-point plan that the governing party has come in, question is, have they brought the labor of the country on board on this eight-point plan? We've had various uh, reports of Kosatu yeah. basically boycotting this issue of this NEC Lukhutla of the governing party and saying that the president has left them with no option but to go to the streets. SABC political reporter Sam Maseko, thank you very much indeed for your time this evening. So after 7 o'clock uh, uh, tonight, something to look forward to. We chat uh, to Wits University's Professor Alex uh, van der Heerfer on lockdown level one regulation updates taking effect this week. Uh, Francis?